Greetings and good day. This is Donnie with Tech Winner, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, guys, the folks at Lamto recently reached out to me and wanted me to test out their smart screen. Yes, this is a 9.26 inch widescreen display that you can use in your car for CarPlay or Android Auto. And as somebody who's been using a competitor for a while, I was really excited to test this one, especially when you're looking at something at this price point, which we'll talk about a little later in this video. And not only did they send me one, they actually sent me two. This one's still in the shrink wrap, so stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna tell you how one of you is going to get to have this. So today we're unboxing it, we're testing it, I'm gonna tell you everything I love and some of the challenges about this product as well. So without any further ado, let's dive in and let's take a look. So guys, full disclosure here on the front end, Lamto did send me this product for free for testing. I have not received any other compensation and the review that you're going to get today is my full review, honest, positive, negatives. You're gonna hear all of it today. So yes, Lamto, interesting branding name, like lambs have hooves, they don't have toes. So another thing I do wanna talk about just briefly here on the front end, because I'm gonna compare back and forth a little bit during this video, I've been using a unit by Carpy Ride for the last several months. You may have seen a video I did about it several months back. It's been a great unit for me. I've wanted to have CarPlay in my car and this was really the thing that got me there. This is something that just telling you right here on the front end, from a price perspective, I'll tell you right now on the front end, this one right now as it's selling is on Amazon for 159 bucks. It also does, at least at the making of this video, have a $20 off coupon. It actually gets your price down to $140 essentially for this product. So much lower price point than Car Pure Ride, but jumping right into that unboxing experience, the box here feels solid. It's got some nice foam padding inside of it as well. And as you open it up, one of the things that I will point out right here on the front end, one of the things that I complained about Carpy Ride was the bezels and the big branding on the front of it. This doesn't have any of that, guys. The bezel is much smaller. There's no unique branding on the front of it. And just flipping this thing over, just one thing I wanna point out here on the front end, it does have on the back its own built-in dash cam as well. And yes, this thing can record at 2.5K or 1080p, depending on what settings you do in the menu, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But diving into some of the other things that are inside of this packaging, as you can see here, it does have USB-C power on it. I always love when a product has USB-C. It's the universal standard now. It's just great to see that inside the box here. It also does have a second webcam that you can optionally install into the back window of your car or into where the license plate is located. For the purposes of my testing, I'll tell you on the front end, I did not do that. I did plug it in just to see how it works. There's also a wire pry tool in here. There's also a little screwdriver. This one does have a windshield mount as well that is optional you can use. It does have a stand that it's already attached to coming out of the box. And as far as the display itself, it has four tiny screws that it uses to stay connected to whatever mount you connect it to. So being able to disconnect this quickly and then connect it to a different type of mount is not something you're gonna be able to do. That is something that I had with the Carpy Ride. So if that's something to, that's important to you, some things are just to note and be aware of here on the front end. But just powering this on for the first time, I always like to do this with a battery pack that gives me some data about how much power it's drawing. This thing at five volts, 5.1 volts, is actually drawing one amp of power, which is not bad at all. The reason I like to know that on the front end is because I already have some USB-C cabling to my dash for the car pure ride unit. And if I don't have to pull that cabling out, I actually prefer to do that and I already have a DC to USB adapter that's in my center console in my car. And yes, just for review purposes here, this is going to be tested on my 2011 Infiniti G25. Yes, I love this vehicle. It's been paid off for a long time and I appreciate not having a car payment. I'm gonna drive this thing till the wheels fall off. One thing of note here as we get into the car install itself, with that old car pure ride unit, I did initially have it connected to my windshield by a suction cup. I finally did decide to mount this thing to the dash. Yes, it is more permanent, but that does tell you that I've bought into this concept of having a CarPlay unit that is attached to the dash. I did actually, yes, put screws into my dash. It's permanent, it's a thing. If I ever take it off, there's going to be holes. So I'm probably never going to take it off. 
And as you can see here, I did find that the mounts were interchangeable. So I took the existing mount that I already installed with the Carpure Ride unit and I did attach it to this Lamto unit and everything worked and it was nice and interchangeable. The mount that was there for Carpure Ride is a little higher. So this ends up sitting a little bit higher than I think it would otherwise but just kind of wanted to highlight that here on the front end. But plugging this in with the USB-C, I already had an extension cable. Everything was super handy with that as well. Looking at some of those settings as far as the dash cam itself is concerned, this does come with a 64 gig card included, and you can expand that up to 128 gig if you would like. This does, of course, record and then overwrite the older files as that card fills up. So just something to be aware of, but in my driving experience, you're going to get somewhere in about an eight hour range of footage if you're just recording to the front with that 2.5K resolution. So still a lot of driving that you can have a record of there. And of course you can get more footage if you use a higher capacity micro SD card. But the install itself and just powering this on for the first time, the quality on this display, my first reaction is it's great. About an inch smaller than the car Puride unit, but what the trade-off there is, at least in my perspective, a very similar resolution to the Carpy Ride in a smaller form factor. So the quality of the image is definitely better. And of course, you've got some of those settings there for brightness. It does have an auto brightness setting in my experience that doesn't actually dim the display. It just changes it over from like the daytime ways view where it's kind of that white map to more of that dark gray map at night. So I ended up just turning that off and manually changing the brightness based on what the time of the day might be. I will say during the daytime, I didn't even need to put this to max brightness. About that 66%, kind of two thirds of the way across was plenty bright for me. And then at night, I would go ahead and put that back to like 10%. And it works very well for me. But that is one nitpick with the Carpure Ride unit, which is more expensive. It did have like a, some sort of an auto sensor to where that brightness would just adjust on its own. So that is just one level of interaction that you do have to do. But guys, I cannot say enough good about the image quality on this display itself. The responsiveness from the touch interface seems very good to me. Setting this up was incredibly easy, getting it paired to my iPhone. Of course, I don't have an Android device, so all of my demonstration that I'm going to be showing you video here is with Apple CarPlay. But the responsiveness from just the touch interface and being able to swipe through and toggle through different apps that you have it seems incredibly responsive to me. Everything works very well with that. One nitpick that I at least at first found to be annoying and as I'm driving more really hasn't been as big an issue is that blue bar that's on the side where you've kind of got another clock and then some controls there that are right there in front of you. I really on the front end wanted that to go away. I, I would like CarPlay to actually fill up the entire screen, give me a full screen CarPlay experience without a blue bar on the side with some more controls. Where I'm actually seeing that to be more handy is if I ever want to see the dash cam footage, I can toggle to that quickly. Also that brightness setting, because this does not support an auto dimming control, it's been very helpful for me to be able to get to that setting quickly and make changes as I need to. Now let's talk a little bit about that speaker quality for just a second. This does have its own built-in speaker. And of course there is also the volume control there on the screen as well. You can make quick adjustments to that. And the speaker quality on this compared to the CarPuride unit, I would say is at least equivalent, if not slightly better which has been really good in my experience. This product does support three different types of audio outputs, technically four if you wanna include that built-in speaker. You can also use Bluetooth audio streaming to your car if your car supports that. And it also does support a three and a half millimeter headphone jack that you can use to connect in if you have a headphone jack port in your car. And if you don't have any of those things, you also can use a built-in FM tuner to be able to basically tune your car's radio to an FM frequency that's not being used in your area, and you can listen to music that way through it. Now, I will tell you in my experience, the FM is not great. So if audio is important to you, that is a big problem and something that you'll have to think through. Now, if you have a Bluetooth option or you have a hardwired option, those are going to be your best bets. If you're going to be depending on the FM transmitter, it's not going to be a great experience for you. Now for me, I mostly commute by myself, so having an AirPod in my ear to be able to listen is not a big deal. 
But again, if that is the only option you have, it is not a great option. But for me, the display itself, the very small bezel, there's no branding on the front of this thing. And guys, it works incredibly well. Let's talk a little bit about that dash cam for just a second. The quality on this video, this playback video is not super great, but it's very serviceable. And from my perspective, I'm really looking to more to invest in a CarPlay unit, but having this additional dash cam footage is just kind of a bonus for me. So I really appreciate having it. It does put a timestamp on it. It does not put location on the video, but I do like that the lens itself is adjustable. So you can adjust that orientation based on what makes the most sense for your video capture. But guys, coming from a car pure ride unit that really I liked and was using consistently every day in my commutes to now going to this Lamto unit that is half the price, has a dash cam built into it, and the image quality on the display itself is better, with smaller bezels, guys, this is my new favorite device that has become an integral part of my driving experience. Special thanks again to Lamto for providing a demo unit for me. Guys, this one is a keeper. I'm gonna put links in the descriptions to this product on Amazon. Again, $140 right now is the making of this video, along with just a micro SD card with a higher capacity that I recommend, and some USB-C extension cables that I used just to get this around my dash nice and clean. If that's something that you wanna take a look at, check out those links in the description. And guys, this one still in the shrink wrap is going to be going into the hands of one of you guys, one of my viewers in Tech Winter Nation. So if you've subscribed, you've liked this video, you've left a comment, you've automatically entered a drawing for this on Sunday, October the 30th, I'm going to be doing a drawing and we'll be announcing who that winner is. To win a couple of qualifications, you do need to be a resident of the United States and you need to have an email address in your about page on YouTube. So I have a way of getting in contact with you to be able to make arrangements to get this shipped to you because I'm paying out of pocket to make this happen. So those are my only qualifications to be able to take this one home. And guys, I can't wait to share this with one of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tell me in the comments if this is a product that you're already testing or for things that you would like to see me test in the near future and hit that bell notification so that you're always staying up to date with new content as it's uploaded. But for now, I'm Donnie with Tech Winner, helping you make winning decisions when it comes to your tech. You guys. Have a great day.